I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today. In light of the controversy surrounding Enhance, including the unanticipated and, according to some, biologically implausible finding that LDL reduction had no effect on atherosclerosis, it is not surprising that there was little agreement between study investigator Dr. Evan Stein and Enhance critic Dr. Alan Taylor. In this series of interviews, we examine three key areas of disagreement, mechanism of action, trial design, and clinical implications. Part 1, Mechanism of Action. The critics don't question the LDL theory. They question how the LDL lowering takes, pla- well, takes place. That, that, that seems that, to be. That is, the, uh, that is questioning the LDL, you know, questioning the mechanism by which you lower well, LDL it's the same, it's the same questions as- LDL, the, the LDL theory. So let's deal with the LDL theory and the mechanism. So let's start with LDL reduction. It is, I think, total ignorance of lipid metabolism to indicate that the mechanism by which LDL is lowered with statins, bile acid binding sequestrants, the old drugs that were used to establish the foundation of LDL lowering and reduction in cardiovascular risk. That was the basis for ATP1 guidelines and ATP2 guidelines before there was any evidence from any statin trial and cholesterol absorption transport inhibitors, or you can go even wider than that, diet reduction, removal of cholesterol or or saturated fats from your diet. Why do I say the mechanisms are all the same? Because all of those mechanisms result in a depletion of hepatic intracellular cholesterol, whether you block it by synthesis, whether you block it by reabsorption, whether you block it by eliminating it from your diet, or whether you increase cholesterol utilization by conversion to bile acid binding to, to bile acids and bile, bind those bile acids in the intestinal tract, preventing their recycle, recyclization. What happens then is that the cell upregulates the LDL receptor and pulls LDL cholesterol out of the bloodstream. Let's see. LDL receptor binds ApoB, which is the main cholesterol-containing fraction. So the mechanism by which you lower LDL with all three mechanisms that I've described is identical in its final pathway. Not so, explains Dr. Taylor, who contends that azetamibe has a unique and possibly harmful mechanism. And so you say, well, now what's the mechanism of action? Well, they find that it blocks a couple of key receptors in the gut that absorb cholesterol. One's called the neiman pick c one like one receptor, Mm -hmm. and the other one is called the scavenger receptor, B1. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. SR, and which, and and they both participate in this process. Mm -hmm. We don't know what neiman pick c one like one does in the liver. We know it's active in the gut to absorb cholesterol, and that's what one mechanism of action for reducing cholesterol absorption. But SRB1 is a pivotal receptor. SRB1 is in your liver. SRB1 is on your macrophage. SRB1 is a high affinity receptor for HDL to participate in reverse cholesterol transport, a key regression mechanism for atherosclerosis. Mm -hmm. This drug blocks that. It blocks it at the receptor level and it blocks it at the gene level. And that's not an intended effect of this drug. This drug is intended to block cholesterol intestinal uptake, which it does, but it's absorbed. And that same disruption in transport of cholesterol is translated to the liver, and the bloodstream, the vessel wall, the macrophage, and that's off target. And that's why this drug is at best ineffective and at worst progresses disease. If you were gonna develop a drug, you would develop a drug that promotes clearance of cholesterol through SRB1, not that blocks it. This is the exact wrong direction for this drug to act. This drug, developed as an ACAT inhibitor, found to inhibit cholesterol uptake from the gut, Mm -hmm. acting in off-target ways at receptor systems pivotal in the transport of cholesterol throughout your body, not just in the gut, is off-target. Dr. Stein, this drug is said to block lipid transport, and critics suggest that that may be the problem with the drug. Could there be harm associated with that? Well, you know, to go into the history, it, it, it has the generic name azetamibe, Mm-hmm. Okay, because it came out of an ACAT inhibitory class. Right. However, it is not an ACAT inhibitor. I think 
people who perhaps watch direct-to-consumer advertising and believe the two sources of cholesterol, perhaps, and don't understand anything fundamental about lipid metabolism, can only make that statement because it's a statement out of total ignorance. So the, I don't think my carotid arteries say to my hepatic liver cell, how did you upregulate that LDL receptor? Oh, I don't like that mechanism. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's absolute nonsense. But Dr. Taylor contends that the issue is the drug. This is not about LDL. This is about a drug. The, admix, the, the confusion of this issue, that lower is better, mm -hmm. this is fine because the drug lowers LDL, has nothing to do with what this drug does. It lowers LDL, and that's a smokescreen for off-target mechanism, which seems to play out in endothelial function and now in atherosclerosis. The burden of proof is on this drug. But is the problem really not LDL and not the drug, but the trial itself? Was there a fatal flaw in the trial design? We investigate that issue in the next segment of this exclusive report. I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today.